Ambassador Mohan Peris. Ambassador, you have the floor, please. Giving me the floor. Permit me to echo the greetings of others and congratulate you, Ambassador Mohit, on assuming the chair and the Bureau members on your election to the Bureau. May I also commend the outgoing Bureau for their commitment. Uh, chair, from Sri Lanka's point of view, this year's theme of fostering resilience and growth in an uncertain world is indeed apt. Chairman, life may be unpredictable, but, a, but, a, but like a tree weathering a storm, it's the roots of resilience that help us grow even stronger in the face of uncertainty. Sri, Lanka is a, Sri Lankans are indeed resilient. We emerge from a protracted conflict and pursued development and growth and in a background of lingering effects of a global pandemic, climate-related crisis of increased frequency, and an economic crisis exacerbated by a volatile international security situation that impact global supply chains, we are on the road to recovery. Chair, with, an, with each calamity, people have adapted and rebuilt. Governments and institutions have adopted standard operating procedures and processes to respond better to the next crisis. However, philosophizing on it, however, is not good enough. In fact, the word resilience is used in many contexts, particularly <clears throat> relating to developing countries. It's a key, a buzzword, to recognize the ability to recover and rebuild no matter the hardship. It is, however, of little solace, we believe, to the victim, to the disadvantaged, who struggles to remain alive while the scribes and those in power find the story of resilience a fine one to narrate to the gullible majority who feast on the heart-wrenching stories of those fortunate survivors who live to tell the tale. Mr. Chair, my delegation, however, also feels that resilience should not be demanded of our peoples year after year, taken for granted and tested continuously. We need to do better so that we avert the necessity of our people to practice fortitude, to create conditions where our people thrive instead of struggling to survive another day of uncertainty. Chair, this global institution of government must be responsive and, and foster resilience, recovery and rebuilding, and also prevention. In his opening remarks, the Assistant Secretary General made the observation that the world has steadied itself economically after several years of turmoil. With rising trade, increasing growth, steadying of inflation, and fall in unemployment rates. This is surely good news for the economists, but of little solace to billions who struggle to make ends meet. Mr. Chairman, the volatile global security situation and active conflicts which divert financing from development threaten, threaten, threaten this very recovery we boast about. This is compounded by the increasingly frequent climate-related disasters which demand that the scarce resources of governments are redirected for immediate needs, taking away from investment in development, structural reforms, and development of infrastructure. Sri Lanka aligns itself with the concerns out outlined by the Samoa by in its statement on behalf of AOSIS with regard to climate vulnerability of those who contribute to the least to the causes that gave rise to the devastation. The work of the Economic and Financial Committee concentrates on many existential and development concerns of developing countries. Therefore, the work in this body must stay relevant to the people of our countries whose interests we represent. The standards we agree to, aspirations we outline, and the political commitments we undertake through these resolutions must be accompanied by nothing but political will to implement, supported by the means of implementation. In this context, Sri Lanka looks forward to engaging in the work of the committee, particularly in the following. One, Sri Lanka looks forward to the 2024 quadriannual comprehensive policy review, uh, the QCPR process, to assess and recalibrate where needed the UN systems to ensure more coherence and efficiency. Sri Lanka calls for better focus on development programs targeting the priorities of the middle income countries. Secondly, Sri Lanka looks forward to the fourth international conference on financing for development to be held in 2025. The Pact of the Future, Mr. Chairman, has given us a roadmap that centralizes and supports the achievements of the SDGs. As Professor Sachs this morning noted in his keynote address in this session, 
quote, SDGs are feasible but not achieved, close quotes. We cannot be complacent and leave it at that. It is for this reason the Pact of the Future was structured as a turbocharging mechanism. It is vital that the preparatory work for this conference focuses on much needed to support the, and bridge the SDGs financing gap. The outcome document must be concrete actions, action oriented. Madam, Mr. Chairman, Sri Lanka is, itse is itself emerging from a debt crisis. Innovative debt financing mechanisms were utilized in restructuring debt repayments with our partners at the Paris Club. I thank Professor Sachs for the thought that provoking keynote, posi uh, positing, uh, keynote positing borrowing as a tool for economic growth, caveated heavily by the necessity for reforms that would allow developing countries the fiscal space necessary to adopt this path and political will required by developing countries. Sri Lanka's recent experience indicates that the meager financial safety nets are inadequate in assisting developing countries facing debt crisis. It is of paramount importance, we say, to reform of the international financial architecture so that we can achieve our global goals. As an island with high climate vulnerability, Sri Lanka prioritizes addressing the triple planetary crisis of climate change, pollution, and biodiversity, uh, biodiversity, biodiversity. Sri Lanka welcomed the adoption of the Global Digital Compact during the high-level week and looks forward to the World Summit of the Information meeting in 2025. Mr. Chairman, Sri Lanka has long been a proponent of multilateral solutions. The Pact of the Future, adopted at the highest political level last month, provided us with renewed vigor. Sri Lanka looks forward, therefore, to engaging constructively in the work of the Second Committee and extend our fullest support to you, to, to you the Chair, and the Bureau to conclude. I thank the distinguished Parliament representative of Sri Lanka.